All right, so we're checking out the fifth wheel Thunder 2. So this is another folding, uh, very portable, very light electric bike. Uh, comes on the lighter side, also comes with some, I guess, less powerful components. So obviously if you want the super fast top speeds and, you know, 200 miles of range, you need giant batteries and everything like that. But for those of you kind of looking for something a little bit more, you know, portable, this is definitely one to check out. This is one I actually I plan on keeping around for a while because this is kind of the bike that I've been looking for. Anyway, uh, let's get into all the specs and everything. You can see the box that it came in behind there. I kind of partially took it apart and uh, it came pretty much mostly assembled inside that box. Of course, it was folded up. And uh, there, I'm not going to waste your time with a lengthy discussion of the build, but there is a full build video that the company put out on their website on the product page. And I'll link that in the video description. You guys can, you know, take a look at that if you want. But in a nutshell, uh, the only thing I had to do was put on the handlebar and then adjust the angle of the brake levers. Now, literally, uh, it took me, this, this build was super easy, about 15 minutes. The fenders were already put on, the front wheel was already put on, uh, the rear fender was already put on, so uh, super, super easy build. Now this has 20 inch wheels, but they're not the typical fat tires where they're um, four inches wide. These are a bit thinner. They're coming in at 2.12 inches, or 2.125 inches, a little over two inches. And they have a different tread, it's not an off-road tread. Uh, so this is not as noisy, so if you guys don't like noisy tires, these are more like road road tires and uh, good traction, of course, and they're not that noisy. This is intended for mainly city streets, sidewalks, maybe a little bit of off-roading, but not really, that's not the intention of this particular bike. So it comes with a fairly modest 350 watt 36 volt motor so it is i think limited to 20 miles an hour so um you're going to get pretty good range on this one up to 60 miles on pedal assist the battery that's inside the frame here is 36 volts and 10 amp hours or 360 watt hours total you've got a six speed shimano tourney shifter and derailleur back here you have a, a rear tail light here that runs off a battery so you got to pull this little plastic tab to activate the battery and I believe this is another reflector here, but I'm not sure if it's activated by the brake levers or not. Got a pretty standard C here. It's not super hard, but it's, uh, I think it's, this is more like a cycling type of uh, bicycle seat. Not more, you know, not like one of those like motorcycle uh, bikes. Pretty, pretty standard here, pretty typical. Uh, I've ridden a couple times and it's not terrible, but you know, uh, not something you're gonna be riding for like 10 hours or anything like that. However, you do have a nice big spring here on the bottom. It has an adjustment. So you can adjust the suspension a little bit here. And this is where most of the bumps are going to occur. And uh, interestingly on this frame, kind of interesting design. You have this sort of, it goes like this, then straight down, then across. You're, a lot of bikes have this like bar that goes like right here from this part of the frame down to the rear wheel and all the force is being put here on this spring so well, let's see how durable this is in the long run as i said i do plan on keeping it around it's a little bit of a different design the welds on here are really big i mean they looks like they grinded it down um maybe trying to do a really good job on the welding here uh gray powder coated finish here it's nice and smooth uh yeah well i mean the frame is some some, some sort of a they're saying aluminum alloy. Um, obviously to keep the weight down. The whole bike only weighs about 50, a little over 50 pounds, I believe, 52 pounds, something like that. So it's on the lighter side and definitely gonna be more portable. You can definitely carry it on in your car trunk or SUV. There's no suspension here in the front. You got a nice uh, bright headlight, pretty standard, like 15 watt headlight here in the front, but no suspension. But the rear suspension does a good, good enough job. You can air down the front tire a little bit if you're on a more bumpy surface. The front wheel doesn't come on a quick release, so it does fold down pretty nicely. So you don't necessarily need to do that, uh, but just pointing out that there's no quick release on here. And you can see the 160 millimeter rotor back there. I'm not sure who makes the 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 uh, brakes here. They're mechanical disc brakes, 
Uh, obviously, it's a class two e-bike. It's not going to go too too super fast. It's not too heavy. So the mechanical disc brakes are going to be fine for this application. So there's a support post here on the bottom of the bike. So when you just fold it up, you can rest the bike on this and it won't fall over. The pedals here are pretty standard for a folding bike. These seem like they're plastic, not metal. So obviously you make it lighter and of course they fold up. Here is where the handlebar folds down and it folds off to the right hand side of the bike as you're looking forward. There is a safety latch right here so it doesn't pop off. Handlebar is completely straight across here. Got your bike display, reflector, got your brake levers on both sides and your SIS shifter uh, right here. And then you have your thumb throttle and just a circular standard rubber grip on the side. So turn on the bike, press the power button, we'll turn it on. And it, it seems like you have to turn the headlight on by double clicking the power button. Then it turns on the backlight to the LCD, shows your battery level, speedometer, pedal assist level, and there's three levels. So zero, one, two, three. That's the most thing. You have your speedometer or your odometer here. Here's all the stuff that came in the box. You got your charger here. It's a 42 volt, two amp charger. So I believe it takes about five, six hours to charge up the bike to full. You get your instruction manual. Uh, got some tools. You have your key here, and this is for the battery to remove it. You don't need a key to actually start and stop the bike. Um, but if you want to uh, unfold the, the bike, take the battery out, you have to use the key to be able to remove the battery. And then they do include this bell, but they did not install it. And that is everything that came with the bike. All right, we're going to start off the pedaling test in level one. And this bike requires to sort of have a kickstart for the motor to kick in. It's a little different. It's kind of like a scooter. So it needs a little bit of movement, not much. And then you get your, or if you just pedal the bike and it starts moving, uh, the motor will kick on. And we're getting about 14 miles an hour in level one. It's pretty high. Right, let's go to level two. 15. Freewheeling now, 16. So we got a cadence or speed sensor on this bike and the controller, 17. Gradual increase in speed here. It's like uh, six, yeah, 17 is the max on level two. All right, let's go to level three. It should give us the maximum 20 miles an hour in level three. So it's a a little bit of a grab, more of a gradual build up in speed on this bike. 19. It's about 19 is the max that we hit on pedaling. That's a throttle here. On throttle, it, it just gives you full speed no matter what. But I can sense it's giving me a little bit more power on throttle versus just pedaling. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit more power and I'm getting up to 20 so instead of 19, so. 20 miles an hour, speed limited on throttle. Okay, so after riding around uh, the bike for a little while, uh, I've noticed that it's very solid. No creaks or weird noises, nothing falling off the bike. Uh, the fenders don't rattle, which is kind of surprising because they're metal and typically metal fenders rattle a lot on these kind of um, budget bikes. And these are really solid. Um, yeah, even over bumps and stuff, hardly makes any noise at all. And over smooth surfaces, uh, no noise whatsoever. It's a really quiet bike. Uh, the motor, uh, I, don't know, I know it's only 350 watts, but uh, hardly makes that much noise compared to a lot of other e-bikes. So that's a plus. Also because these have uh, skinny tires, not fat tires, and these are road tires, uh, they don't make the typical fat tire road noise. Uh, it's, you know, somewhat fairly loud and um, can be bothersome to some people, but you know, uh, if you're looking for a bike that doesn't make a lot of noise, this is definitely one to check out. So of course, all the things I like about this are the lightweight, the fact that it folds and it's portable. Um, all those things are positives in my opinion. The ride's very smooth. The single uh, large spring suspension in the back 
is more than a good enough for street sidewalks and most those most type of those kind of asphalt surfaces. Obviously, this is not intended to be an off-road bike because it doesn't have the fat tires. You can do a little bit of you know grass riding, that kind of thing is not going to be a problem. But for long-term uh, riding, I wouldn't recommend this for off-road. Now, of course, you know some of the positives there for in terms of being lightweight and small and portable are, and, and I guess downsides for those of you that want super long range. Um, you know, you could have to carry have a huge battery, or if you want like massive amounts of top speed, then yeah, you're going to need a huge motor. Since those things add a lot of weight and also affect its portability. A lot of those bikes aren't foldable, so you're pretty much you have to you know put you can't put the bike inside your trunk. You have to actually get a bike rack for your car if you want to transport it anywhere. A couple of things I didn't like so much: uh, the fact that you have to get the bike pedaling first before the motor will actually kick in. You can't use a throttle to just get the bike going, which I typically like to do. So this is a personal preference of mine. So you do have to pedal a little bit, get the bike moving, and then the motor will kick in, of course, for pedal assist, but then at that point, it'll allow you to use a throttle. So it's a bit unusual. I think this is the only bike that I've seen that does this. Uh, it's, it's, uh, that behavior is more like a scooter, like a kick scooter versus a bicycle. I've never seen this on, a, on an e-bike before. So that, that kind of bothers me a little bit, but yeah, not a deal breaker in my opinion, just something you should be aware of, that you do need to pedal it to get the motor activated. Once, it, once you get the bike moving you know, a couple miles an hour, uh, the throttle will work and you can just run it on throttle only. That, that'll work just fine. One other thing that um, could be a negative for some taller people, uh, the handlebar does not extend up. It's a fixed height. So of course you can fold it down to you know fold the bike down, but uh, typically on these, there's um, uh, the ability to raise up the handlebar a little bit higher, uh, just so that you know you, the seat height doesn't seem to be a problem. That's that seems to be fairly adjustable in terms of like if you want more seat height. But the handlebar is fixed, so if that's something that you need in terms of being a taller rider, I'm six foot tall. You can see me on this bike. It, I'm I'm fine with it, but just something to note that you know if you need it to be higher, uh, you don't have the ability to raise it up. All right, so that's going to cover for this review. Um, there's going to be a coupon code down in the video description for $300 off the regular price, which is $9.99. So if you use my coupon code, Albert Kim, you can see it here on the screen, um, you can get $300 off, so it'll be $6.99. So this is a, for that price, for this bike, I think that's a very good uh, price. It's a pretty good deal, especially for everything you get um, compared to a lot of other bikes in this sort of budget class. And yeah, I highly recommend it. So link will be down in the video description if you guys want to buy the bike. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up on the video. That really helps out the channel. And consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this in the future in case you haven't already. That'll do it for this video. Talk to you guys in the next one.